it's about that time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the segment of City Views. We are so honored to be able to have here with us this afternoon the Honorable Mayor of the City of Torrington, Ms. Eleanor Carbone. Mayor, how are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. I hope everybody else is staying safe and being healthy. Well, we appreciate your time because it's been a while. It has. And from, from the last time we talked, uh, until now, a lot has gone down. It has been an incredibly um, busy time, uh, a little bit scary and a little bit heartbreaking. Um, and then throw in, you know, that you still have to um, run a city and adopt a budget and um, and educate our kids. Yeah, it's been it's been an incredible um, 13 weeks for us. Well, Mayor, I. Before we get started, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, tip my hat to you, even though it's a Boston Red Sox hat. <laughs> they all work. Because um, I think during this pandemic, um, the citizens of Torrington uh, can be well, um, well sure that uh, you have coordinated all of the, the principles uh, involved to make sure that the residents stayed safe. Um, you jumped on this this pandemic early, and I think because of that, you have mitigated uh, this virus to a point where it's manageable. So um, I just want to uh, thank you for that on behalf of um, the staff here at City Views and uh, from our viewers. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that was definitely a team effort. Um, and what I've learned through this whole process is uh, communication is the key to success. So um, it's something that we worked on together um, through our Working Cities Challenge. It's something that we have talked about for years. Um, but if ever there was a time that that was proven, it certainly was now. Well, Mayor, could you uh, share with us a little bit, uh, too, in terms of um, how we're coming back from this, especially uh, here in the city of Torrington? Um, some people are somewhat apprehensive, um, not feeling totally secure about um, the uh, impact of the virus. Uh, and then others are, you know, full speed ahead. Um, if you could kind of lay the groundwork as in terms of, you know, as a community, how we should look at this, um, what advice would you give us? Now, what I would give you advice, the advice that I give to everybody is um, we, first and foremost, always follow our guidance through the CDC. Um, we feel that that is um, the science is um, there at their fingertips, the advice that they're providing is the best advice. Um, so um, overarching CDC guidance um, and um, our local Torrington area health district um, are the guiding principles for us in reopening our economies, reopening um, city services. Um, obviously the state is giving um, guidance on uh, things like education and to businesses. So um, my advice to everybody is follow that guidance to the, um, to the extent that you can. And if you're not comfortable um, going out to a restaurant or um, coming down to City Hall to um, access any of the services that you may need here, um, don't. You know, this is as much about your comfort level, your knowing uh, what you can tolerate, what are your underlying health concerns, so um, there's as much uh, self-accountability or self-responsibility in all of this as there is guidance that's being given through um, all of those agencies. Now, are you hearing from the uh, CDC on a regular basis? Because um, it, it seems as if uh, to some degree, we're not getting um, a, full, um, a full portion of what those guidelines are, especially with the, the changing um, environment in which this virus exists. 
You know, I, I have to admit, um, when we talk about the science and the science dictating what are we supposed to be doing by way of um, uh, uh, self-quarantining or isolation or mask wearing, you know, hand washing, um, I don't think that CDC has changed any of those um, guidelines, um, social distancing, their proven successes, um, mask wearing. I know that we're going to get some um, some people that are, you know, believing in that science and some people that question that science. But uh, CDC has been consistent in their message. Uh, we have been um, using CDC for guidance and um, that guidance is then filtered down through the Torrington Area Health District who have been absolutely amazing, very accessible, not only to uh, us through our emergency operations center and through the incident command um, structure, but also to the city business owners, restaurants, health clubs, our child care centers, um, and our school. So um, as much as we rely on CDC guidelines that do come to us on a regular basis, Pointon Area Health has been our lifeline to all of the interpretation of those guidelines. Well, that's good news. And I think that uh, understanding how well coordinated you are with uh, your, your entities uh, surrounding this, I think gives a lot of comfort to, to the residents here. Um, now, there is talk about a second wave. Um, what measures are you prepared to take if indeed we have another breakout here in our city? You know, one of the things that we learned going into this pandemic is um, there's this document that is known um, among um, federal agencies called a Continuity of Operations Plan, a COOP. Um, and it's something that, you know, we did not have here in the city for city hall functions. It is not something that any of our businesses um, had within their um, toolkits for um, uh, operating businesses. So um, what we have been doing in the last four weeks is reaching out to businesses by sector and holding these teletown hall meetings to not only help them interpret the guidelines for reopening, but also to establish an open line of communication so that we can start speaking with them about um, developing that coop for their businesses. Um, if there is a second wave in the fall, for any of those restaurants that pivoted to developing a strong takeout order system, uh, or to um, those health clubs who developed um, an online um, platform for reaching out to their um, their client base, their customer base, to develop online uh, workout routines. Um, so we're now transitioning into that to help them identify what are those resources and how can they strengthen those resources. Now, with the business uh, aspect of things, uh, it seems that, uh, you know, you're making head headroom there. But uh, how are things going to be looking in terms of the educational scene going forward if, in fact, there is a second wave that hits us? I think this is one of the hardest things for um, us as a municipality um, or for the Board of Education and the um, school administration is not knowing what that looks like. Um, obviously, they're usually planning now for what the opening of school looks like at the end of August they don't know at this point exactly what that is you know how many uh how many kids can be in a classroom at one time you know how many um, children can be transported by uh, by bus what are the um, safety protocols for social distancing or mask wearing so um that is a work in progress and um and i have to give um, props to um, our superintendent of schools, because if ever there was somebody that was learning to pivot and adjust, you know, with less notice than, you know, than anybody could ever anticipate, expect, or, or wish for, um, she's been doing a great job with this. So 
it is still um, up in the air. We're hearing now the expectation is that the kids will go back to school. They want to be taught in cohorts of under 10. I'm not sure if that's summer school or fall. So um, a lot of work to be done. Indeed. And, and we're in good hands. I guess that's the one thing that I would want to say to anybody that's listening or watching this, um, to be confident that we are in excellent hands with the administrative team because uh, they are certainly taking all of these injects and putting them into action as quickly as they can. Well, Mayor, that leads me to uh, another topic uh, involving uh, the education of our of our children. Um, and you just uh, voted to pass on a referendum to the citizens of Torrington about a new high school. Um, what are your thoughts about that? And how did that determine your vote in terms of making that a referendum for the citizens? So when it comes to um, any decisions made um, by the city council or board of finance that involves any long-term borrowing or bonding, um, all of those decisions must be passed on to referendum for a vote by all taxpayers um, and residents, um, not just taxpayers, but residents as well. Um, and taxpayers who are non-residents. If you own property in the city of Toynton, but you live in another community, um, as many of our business owners do, um, they have to be allowed an opportunity to vote on this as well. Um, my um, tie-breaking vote on that um, was an acknowledgement to the Board of Education that for the better part of the last two years, they have been um, formulating uh, an assessment of what uh, education looks like, what the educational facilities look like right now, um, what are the strategies that will um, guarantee or certainly give us a better, um, uh, better standing on retaining some of our students that after eighth grade decide that they may want to go to um, a magnet school or a charter school or another school outside of Torrington. Um, so it was um, certainly an acknowledgement that after two years of working on this, um, they were ready to send it to the voters. Um, I do feel strongly that uh, it is a, uh, an important matter. It's an important matter for our parents uh, who have children in our schools. It's an important matter for the taxpayers that will be paying for it over the next 20 years. Um, so it's, um, and I do feel strongly that with putting this matter on an, uh, a referendum question on the regular um, ballot in November is um, a guarantee that the largest number of uh, voters will see that question and have an opportunity to weigh in on it. Are there any contingency plans if, uh if it is accepted by the residents for the current high school? So um, what we know is if this uh, referendum question passes, then um, the timeline that was spelled out for the, um, uh, for the project will start immediately. You know, they'll begin uh, bringing in an architect that'll actually design this and they'll start um, getting ready for that shovel in the ground for construction. If this fails in referendum, um, yes, we did speak very briefly at the last council meeting as to what the backup plan or plan B is, because what we know is the high school does desperately need repairs. Um, so uh, those repairs um, were uh, certainly identified in one of the options presented, option um, A, I believe, um, which is also a very expensive option. Um, I suspect that the Board of Education will be coming right back to the Council and the Board of Finance to talk about how we move this forward um, again, uh, if it involves bonding or borrowing a vote by the by the voting public. Now, just on the surface, which is going to be the most economically feasible act to pursue? Without a doubt, um, new construction is um, always a higher percentage of state grant funding. So with the, um, with the uh, area of focus that the Board of Education wants to advance is um, a new construction of the high school 
uh, the construction of a new junior high school. I'm calling it a junior high school because there seems to be some confusion about a new middle school. Um, and then demolition of all of the old high school, including uh, the classrooms, the um, gymnasium, and that demolition would then pave the way for um, uh, further fields, uh, soccer fields, uh, baseball fields, and parking. Um, so the greatest um, benefit by way of grant reimbursement is with that model. Changing topics, Mayor, uh, we were both, I think, um, I'm not speaking for you. However, I do think that we were both blessed by Friday's uh, celebration at City Hall for the Juneteenth um, uh, recognition and acknowledgement. Um, and you've been working very closely with uh, two members in our community who have uh, stepped up to uh, do some amazing things here in Torrington. Uh, Effie Johnson and Angaza and Wando. Um, share with uh, our audience a little bit uh, about your views about uh, the Juneteenth celebration and how these two individuals have brought uh, that aspect of culture to Torrington. You know, I'm incredibly proud of um, the work that has been happening over the last two years through our culture is beautiful. Um, I know that you're also um, integral to that organization and the efforts that have been um, being advanced out of um, our culture is beautiful. Um, I, I always feel Torrington is just a little bit of ahead of our time when it comes to these things because we are so blessed to have um, the benefit of a community that is very um, aware of um, our cultural differences, very aware of our, um, uh, our need to be working together. Um, I always say this, um, we are um, a city and like big cities, we have big city problems, but we are still small enough to know and care for each other. Um, we don't have neighborhoods or sections of town or districts or boroughs that separate us. You know, we all live together. Our kids go to school together and play together. We all work together and pray together. Um, and um, to me, that is um, the basis or the foundation for good relationships in our community. Um, Effie and in Gaza, um, as I say, over the last two years have done a lot to um, identify more ways for us to embrace our cultural diversity. Um, again, ahead of their times over the last two years. On Friday, which was Juneteenth, it was a great celebration of the um, last level of awareness that need to be brought to the nation about the end of slavery. And uh, as, as I said in the um, proclamation that I presented, um, this is worthy of national recognition as a national holiday. Um, just as we celebrate the 4th of July, which is the celebration of uh, the nation's freedom, we should be celebrating Juneteenth on that same level. Um, so I'm looking forward to continuing all of those discussions with our Cultural is Beautiful, with our Cultural Affairs Committee, um, and with members of our community, not only those members that live in the city of Torrington, but our young people who chose to move away from Torrington, but still have their finger on the pulse of what we're doing here. And I'd just like to acknowledge, uh, Mayor, the fact that you did have a proclamation from the city in honor of uh, Juneteenth Day, and uh, hopefully that will become a reality here in the yes. state of Connecticut for us. Yes. No, I agree. It's worthy of it. Now, uh, Franklin Street Project. Yes. Uh, things seem to be coming along uh, quite uh, quite amazingly there. Um, uh, how, how are you feeling about the project? You know, I so I, I grabbed a cup of coffee down at the uh, Good Company Coffee House this morning. She's open again, um, and had an opportunity to sit on the you know the portion of the sidewalks that are uh, accessible to the public. I'm incredibly pleased with the progress that we've made on this. Um, it's always hard to get the public to understand what you're trying to accomplish when you undertake such a big project um, in an area that is underutilized or underappreciated yet um, is essentially a welcome mat to the city of Torrington from all parts south. 
whether you're coming up from um, the south end of the city or coming down 202 from Litchfield. Um, it is, um, I want to say, ahead of schedule in many aspects. We had good weather all winter long, so we saw construction happening um, at a clipped rate. Um, unfortunately, um, with this pandemic and the limit on the um, crowd, uh, uh, crowd sizes that we can have, I don't see us being able to get any of the programming in that we hoped we'd have in this summer. Um, but I do think now that people can see the vision on how this social civic space can be used um, for farmers market, for pop up um, music events, pop up art events, uh, fundraisers, festivals, or simply for outdoor dining, which um, we were able to enjoy a sliver of this morning. So I'm pleased. Um, I hope there are as well. I got uh, a call from Gerald Incadella. Mm -hmm. He's uh, in Los Angeles right now, and uh, he wanted me to give him an update. I said that I would be talking to you today. <laughs> so uh, hopefully he'll be returning uh, to Torrington uh, as soon as uh, he gets the go-ahead from um, the governor of California that uh, they're, they're good to go there. So Yeah, um, and I appreciate your sharing that. He, um, he emails me occasionally just to check in and to remind me. You know, one of the um, one of the elements at Franklin Street is a meditation labyrinth, which um, I have been trying to find the right location for this labyrinth um, uh, for the better part of a, a decade, for ten years. Um, so when we decided to move forward with the Franklin Street, the Franklin Plaza, I'm calling it, um, identifying in Patterson Park that it really almost uh, presented a natural. Um, uh, uh, location for this. Um, and I shared that with Gerald and Candela about four or five years ago. And at the time he was traveling to his home in France. And when he returned, he brought a paperweight, which has a labyrinth on it for me, um, just to remind me that I shouldn't back off of my vision. <laughs> now. So every time I pick up that paperweight, I think of him and um, I think he will be quite pleased when he sees the progress we've made. Very cool. Now, yeah. uh, Unfortunately, um, Mayor, um, I'm sure that uh, you have observed the um, social unrest that um, has been uh, coming into play since some of the uh, unfortunate and tragic deaths of um, some citizens of our country. Um, we had an interview uh, last week with our new chief of police, Bill Baldwin. And he, I think, is just the right type of man to have in this position at this particular time. Uh, can you share your thoughts with us um, about your feelings about our chief of police and how instrumental he can be at uh, bringing about healing within our community? Absolutely. And I agree with you um, that he is just the right um, type of chief that this public is begging for. Um, it's about building confidence, uh, confidence in the community that um, that he is not only aware of um, the um, the importance of social justice, that he is um, empathetic to that um, need, but that he provides the kind of leadership in our department that ensures or reassures our public that everything that um, presents itself as best practice in policing is exactly what he's put into place. Um, for, um, for the last uh, seven or eight years, there has been a great attention paid to community policing in this community. Uh, when you look at um, Officer Simon on his segue, you look at the um, police officers that are on bicycle patrols, you know, that are parking their um, patrol cars and they're getting out and they're doing walking beats. Um, those are the kinds of community policing that reassure the public that there is an open line of communication. Um, add to that that additional layer, layer of um, the commitment to our PAL program, this um, opportunity for our police officers to have face time with our youth to develop those relationships 
in such a way that there's a comfort level and there's trust. When there's trust among the residents in the community um, with their police department, um, there's, um, there's an opportunity for us to grow and learn from each other. So incredibly proud of all of our police department because they all feel the same way, that it is community policing that paves the way to building that trust. Now, in that mix, uh, Mayor, what, because it's been brought up um, in several of our community chat groups on, on social, social media, uh, what's your feeling on uh, community policing review boards? Uh, a, a review board? Um, or a, a community-based review board. I mean, I know we do have our, you know, public safety board that, that right. looks over stuff, but um, there's a little con uh, concern in terms of um, establishing that level of independence so that uh, there's a uh, quote-unquote neutral bo body intact that can help that review process. How, what, are your, what are your feelings on that? So and that is exactly what our Board of Safety is. You know, they are a neutral board. They are a board that is elected by the public to represent the public. Um, you know, and their role is critical in uh, developing those policies and looking at how our public safety departments are funded um, and bringing any of those community concerns to the attention of the chiefs in such a way um, a, a very public way at uh, monthly meetings. Um, I'm incredibly proud that the city has never moved away from that type of um, board um, as opposed to other uh, larger municipalities that may have a commissioner um, or um, uh, don't have the benefit of a, a publicly elected um, review board. So uh, I, I think that we've hit that mark. Um, there's also public comment so that if there's um, a concern from any member of the public that the board is a little bit out of touch with what the public may be concerned about, um, at every single one of those meetings, there's a public participation where um, those concerns can be brought forward um, and brought forward in a manner that allows the Board of Safety then to pick up the torch and, um, and carry it forward in development or fine-tuning of policies. I think we're there. Well, Mayor, um, as we begin to uh, wrap this up, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Um, and the first question I would like to ask you is, uh, during your tenure so far in office, what is the thing that you're most proudest of? So most proud of the fact that, um, that we've spent so much time um, reviewing our, um, our uh, communication with the public through the Working Cities Challenge, identifying where those gaps are, um, trying to develop a, um, uh, an open line of communication um, that affords the public uh, a voice um, in, the, in the, um, uh, the decisions that are being made. Um, I'm also proud of our commitment to reinvesting in the city of Torrington through our infrastructure, um, identifying that uh, roads have been ignored for the better part of 30 years, and it's something that we couldn't afford to uh, ignore any longer. Um, very proud of the fact that we're uh, looking at um, further investment. You know, I always say that if you know um, if we're not investing in ourselves. How can we expect uh, a business or a family to come and invest in us? Um, incredibly proud that, um, that our um, community has um, found a way to um, support each other. Um, and nothing was more evident of that fact than through this pandemic, um, finding ways to support um, uh, food insecurity during the pandemic and working with our um, food banks and uh, food collection processes, working with our hospital and identifying where might there be, um, you know, uh, some support should they need it in the event of a surge that couldn't be met in their hospital. Um, 
just so incredibly proud of this community because as you heard me say it earlier, you know, we are small enough to know and care for each other. And that has been proven over and over again. Now, is there one thing throughout uh, your tenure in office that perhaps you might wish that you would have done differently or um, something that you think that you possibly could have improved on? Well, always. I mean, I don't think there's a mayor or a legislator out there that doesn't say that every day there's probably something that can be done better. Um, I know that uh, you mentioned social media earlier. I know that there's um, there's a large demand for um, more information, more immediate um, through social media. Um, I don't have a strong social media um, presence. Um, something that I think I need to work on, something that I need is that I identify as, um, as uh, an area of improvement. Um, I think that, uh, you know, finding ways to um, engage our businesses um, better, um, you know, to be a better partner with our businesses and to help them grow and be sustainable. Um, even through the pandemic, as we look at some of these businesses that are forced to close, um, you know, what could we have done differently before the pandemic that might have been able to assist them through this? Um, and then, of course, um, I mean, obviously, um, finding more ways to um, engage our public um, in processes. You know, we might invite them to events and say we're going to have a discussion about the development of trails in the community or the development or improvements of sidewalks or um, through the development of the um, high school um, improvements. Um, just finding ways to be more engaging to the public because at the end of all of these process, we always shake our heads and say, it was nice that the five people that showed up were there, but it really should have been 500 people. So those are the areas that I think are, you know, that, that need vast improvement. Well, Mayor, um, we know that you have a very, very busy schedule. And uh, we so, we're so grateful that you did take the time to speak with us today. However, let's not make it so long between our next talk. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, I appreciate you reaching out to us. And well, uh, boy, if we've learned anything... Technology is amazing, and there's a you know there's a whole new uh, way of thinking about um, how to reach our public through this. Absolutely, and uh, we're so glad that uh, you've taken time to uh, to participate in this social media uh, segment as we're transitioning our show from the live cable studio broadcast to our online platform. So. Hopefully this will uh, accommodate you and our other interviewees a little bit better so that if you can't, aren't available for our Tuesday night broadcast that uh, we can accommodate you in this way, so. Excellent, thank you, I appreciate that. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. So um, when we talk about communication, this is as much a part of that as, as everything else. So thank you. And I would be remiss without uh, thanking you for uh, your recognition of me um, that was very, very, very nice of you. Absolutely. Grateful for all of our members of our community that are making us better. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor, the distinguished mayor of the city of Torrington, Miss Eleanor Carbone. It's about that time. City news, city news. What's happening in your city? City news, city news. City news, city news. For your city, city views, city views, city views. Ah, city views, city views, city.